You know, after years and years of starts and stops, Central Florida is finally going to get a high-speed train. Well, tonight we're taking an in-depth look at how it's going to work, where it will stop, and what it will cost. Craig Patrick rode the train that's coming to town. When you ride high-speed trains, you can see why they're popular in Europe. I'm meeting a friend who is on holiday from England. They make it easier for friends to connect and for business travelers to work across the continent. We heard four different languages in the same rail car. But this is not high speed rail in Europe. This is the new train in South Florida, and it's coming to Tampa. I got to work on my way up and didn't have to worry about traffic. You may recognize the face behind Florida's new high speed rail. Sir Richard Branson, founder of Virgin Records, books, hotels, cruise lines, air travel, and space travel is now staking his name and fortune on Virgin Trains. Are you 100% confident that the grand plan will be built all the way to Orlando and then to Tampa? I'm 100% confident. Um, obviously, reassured that we, that we just raised 1.8 billion um, to do the first major leg of that. The express rail already links Miami to Fort Lauderdale and West Palm Beach. From there, it'll connect to Orlando and Tampa. Branson guaranteed it. And I'm absolutely certain that um, uh, that Tampa, Tampa will be getting a Virgin Trains uh, in the not too distant future. The government planned a statewide high speed rail system for decades. Former Governor Charlie Crist even accepted federal money to build the line from Tampa to Orlando. But then his successor, former Governor Rick Scott, claimed it would lose money and killed it. That's the type of things Charlie Chris does. He promotes things that lose money. But while Scott mocked the state's plan, his own administration commissioned a study showing it would have turned profits. Then Scott and his wife invested millions of their money into the parent company of a private venture called All Aboard Florida, which operated as Brightline, which became Virgin Trains, which now sees an opportunity to improve travel and cash in. What do you see in the Tampa to Orlando line that former state leaders did not? I think we've got a general, we've built a system already now from Miami to West Palm Beach. We've seen what that can do. We're expanding it. We've just gotten funded all the way into the Orlando International Airport. Uh, Tampa is a, is, is a meaningful connection. Growth in the city of Tampa over the last decade has been incredibly impressive. We see a massive opportunity. Virgin is still negotiating land use fees, which may be why they'll talk you in circles when you try to pin them down on specifics. We have talked publicly about potentially putting a station location um, near a theme park. Are you currently negotiating with Disney for use of its land? So stuff? we're in talks uh, with a bunch of people. Right. What about Disney? We're in talks with a bunch of people. You can't answer that question, really? So, I, as I said, we're in talks with a lot of people. But we have company records that reveal much more than Virgin may want to discuss. Here's its own map showing the train will stop at Orlando's International Airport, then stop at Disney. Virgin already has a letter of intent from Disney. Then it will track west along I-4 to a stop in Tampa. It'll offer snacks, drinks, and Wi-Fi, catering to business travelers like Edwin Hernandez. It's uh, useful because you can work all the way to uh, your destination. Virgin says it will not interfere with primary transportation needs. Previous government plans address that by running a track through the median and above the I-4 overpasses. Virgin has not yet decided the height or elevation of its plan. It does expect to spend $1.7 billion in private money to build it, versus the government plan that had estimates up to $3.5 billion. The Virgin plan is much cheaper, in part because the trains will not run as fast. The government plan for speeds up to 168 miles per hour. Virgin's trains top out at 120 miles per hour. That still qualifies as high speed by the state's own definition, and it can still deliver passengers from Tampa to Orlando in one hour, saving at least 20 to 30 minutes just as it already does from Miami to West Palm Beach. I live in West Palm Beach, and I like to come down to Miami, but I don't like driving because it's really congested. Um, and I think the pricing is good because it's a good experience. Um, everybody's really nice. <laughs> Fares from Miami to West Palm Beach start around $15 one way, with discounted rates for frequent riders. Trains run on the hour through most of the day and every 30 minutes during rush hour. Commuters told us it cost about the same as driving. When you factor in what I would have to pay for parking, what I would have to pay for the charges during um, surge hours on the tolls, it really adds up to just about the same, theoretically. Company filings put the cost of a one-way ticket from Tampa to Orlando at $35, or around $70 round trip. 
there will be people in Tampa who say they're not going to pay $35 one way to go to Orlando. They'll just drive. What's in it for them? People who take the train are already eliminating cars from area roadways. So while a Tampa family of four may not pay $280 to go to Orlando and back, the fares would likely get bundled into travel packages for tourists, while business travelers like Joseph Lesko would gladly take it as a work expense. But if I was taking uh, an Uber, which is my really my only other option, it would cost me about $100, and I would have to deal with traffic. That alone could reduce traffic on I-4, while offering a faster, more productive alternative and deliver on the state's vision of high-speed rail for its taxpayers. We hope you enjoyed your carefree, car-free ride. Without spending the taxpayers' money. This is actually my, my first time, and uh, I'll use it again. <laughs> Well, Virgin Trains secured the money to build the line from West Palm Beach to Orlando just a couple of weeks ago, and it expects to have that connection up and running by 2022. Craig Patrick, Fox 13 News.